Okay, part B of the question is to look, ask the question, is radiation significant in this problem? And in order to examine this question, we're going to make an approximate solution just to ask the question, is it significant? Because we were only asked, is it significant? And so what we're going to do is we're going to say, well, we have a parallel resistance with this radiation process. Between Tn out to the outer surface of the plywood, uh, our resistance network is the same, but now we have the possibility of transferring heat by convection to the uh, outside temperature. And we also, through a parallel pathway, have the possibility of uh, losing heat transfer by radiation to the outer surface. Where the radiation resistance uh, can be described by in the, the resistance network using a uh, convection, a heat transfer coefficient for radiation, whereas we saw in a previous video the definition of that HR uh, would be given by this expression here. And notice now that the HR is a function of that surface out temperature, and of course we must use Kelvin uh, for these temperatures here. So in the Jupiter, um, <coughs> I've added these things, and of course all my temperatures, I've added 273.15 uh, to them to make sure that all my temperatures are now in fact in Kelvin. Calculate that uh, radiation heat transfer, and because I've already solved this without radiation, I have an existing estimate of this temperature surface out. Now I will use this simply to calculate the heat transfer through this resistor here, and we'll ask the question of whether it's significant or not putting my variables into the Jupyter Notebook and making sure that all my temperatures are in Kelvin owing to the radiation uh, problem. I've added the Stefan Boltzmann constant here uh, and I'm calculating simply a T1 and T2 where by T1 and T2 here I mean the temperature across this resistor that I'm going to calculate here. And so T1 will be my T surf out that I just calculated from above, my current estimate of this temperature at this point on the surface, the outer surface of the plywood. And T2, of course, is my outer temperature, um, T outside, uh, expressed in Kelvin. So then I can calculate the radiation heat transfer. It's simply T surface out minus T out over the resistance due to radiation, which we just calculated. And I can see that the heat transfer from the outer wall surface due to radiation is 5.8 watts per meter squared. Now that is very significant. If we remember, we had the heat rate going through the wall as 8.1 watts when we didn't consider radiation, and so almost as much radiation, almost as much energy is being lost from that surface due to radiation as it is due to uh, convection at that surface. So clearly our estimate was not very good and we should have considered radiation on this wall. So now I'm going to look at the supplementary question, solving the, radi the, the resistance network with radiation. So instead of just saying yes, we're very confident that radiation was significant, let's actually calculate it correctly, not just assuming that outer surface temperature that we calculated when we had no radiation and using it to estimate this, but let's do this properly. And so now we have a situation where we can look at this first part of the resistance network in series and say that the heat transfer going through this first part of the resistance, R1 to R4, is of course Tn minus this T surface out over R1 to R4. And then that Q that's coming in through this part is going to split up, and part of it is going to go out by radiation, and part of it is going to go out by convection. And so conservation of energy is going to tell us that Q is equal to Q rad plus Q conv. And of course, we can describe each of those two resistors like this. And looking at that conservation of energy equation, there's Q in my diagram up above, T in minus T surface out. Let's put that down so we can see it. T in minus T surface out over the sum of these resistors in series is equal to T surface out minus T out over the resistance to radiation. So that is Q rad. And T surf out minus T out that is Q conv. So that's our expression of conservation of energy. And from that, let's solve for the outer surface temperature. Rearranging this equation and just noting that R1 to 4 is the sum of R1, R2, R3, and R4. So implementing that, then I can see that the first estimate of my outer surface, uh, surface temperature accounting for radiation is 2.8 degrees centigrade. 
And now I can calculate what the convection and radiation heat transfer is going out. And now I printed out the heat transfer due to radiation, which is 3.4871 watts per meter squared. The heat transfer due to convection is almost 5 watts per meter squared. And of course, the total heat transfer, or the Q, which is going through resistors R1, 2, 3, and 4, is 8.3858. Now, with these numbers, we could calculate a new estimate of that surface temperature. And remember, the HR, the heat transfer coefficient due to radiation, is a strong function of that surface temperature. So we're going to have to iterate this in order to solve it because of that radiation term. So let's do that again. We'll calculate uh, the new surface out using the equation we had above. We calculate the T surface out. And then simply I've cut and paste with what is, uh, what is up there above in order to recalculate Q rad and Q conv with that new surface temperature. And we see that these numbers have changed ever so slightly. In fact, I think they've changed in the third decimal place. Just because we can, and it's easy in the Jupyter Notebook, let's do this again for a third iteration. And so cutting and pasting this again, and doing this with a new estimate of the surface out from recalculating the heat transfer coefficient due to radiation with my new estimate of T surface out, uh, and looking now, we see no changes to the decimal that I've shown here. If I did show it to more decimals, you would, in fact, see a change. And you can clearly see uh, that the estimate of the outer surface temperature has changed a little bit in this process, but it's changed in, I think, the sixth decimal place. And so if the heat flexes were changing in the sixth decimal place, we're talking about an error that's in the, in the order of microwatts per meter squared, and we'll happily take this as a good answer for a problem. In fact, the second iteration uh, was fine. You may have noticed uh, that those two resistors, because our temperature of the outside, it doesn't have to be this way, but the temperature reference for radiation, the temperature of the surroundings in this case is the same as the outside temperature. We could have taken these to be two resistors in parallel and combined them into one, into one network. If we knew this outer surface temperature, we could do that exactly right because we need that this temperature here in order to estimate this heat transfer coefficient for radiation. And so we would still have to iterate if we did that. But of course, now that we know that estimate, we could see that it's identically the same if we combine those two resistors in parallel, the convection and the radiation resistances, uh, and add those to our series resistances, we'll get exactly the same heat rate as we had above. Uh, 8.3858 watts per meter squared. And finally, my supplementary D was to plot the heat transfer through the wall, excluding radiation for insulation thicknesses from 1 centimeter to 20 centimeters. So for this, I'll simply do exactly as I did for part A of the question, except that I'm going to create a vector for the thickness of the insulation, and I will let that insulation vary from 0 0.01 meters, or 1 centimeter, to 0 0.2, and this function here is simply making a vector that goes from these two numbers. I tell it n point equals true to make sure that I have a point uh, at 20 centimeters. And I'm asking for 15 points in that vector. So if I were to look at this variable, you can see that what this is doing, in fact, I'll just quickly print that out for you so you can see it. Print t ints. And you can see that that is giving me exactly what we wished a vector that goes from 1 centimeter to 20 centimeters, and there are 15 entries in there. So now I don't have to change anything. I can cut and paste what, what was up there before. T insulation is now a vector instead of a single number as it was above. And so when I calculate this, I will see that the heat rate that is calculated is now also a vector which has 15 entries. And therefore, I can very easily plot it. Here's an example of how we do a plot in a Jupyter Notebook. And we can clearly see that the heat loss through the wall uh, is, decre is decreasing as we go to thicker and thicker uh, insulation thicknesses. And you might decide from a space point of view or from an economics point of view uh, that you're paying significant, you're, you're paying you know, to go from 5 to 10 centimeters of insulation or 10 to 15, you're paying the same material cost, but from 10 to 15, you're only decreasing uh, the heat loss by this amount, whereas from 5 to 10, you're decreasing it by this amount. So you might decide 
uh, where to cut this off based on those considerations are, of course, the thicker you go, the lower and lower that heat loss is going to be.